Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Comic Book Users. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Cover. We're continuing on with the Avengers, the Korvac Saga. This is issue number two, well, part two, I should say. Issue number 168, this is from 19, this is from 77 still, yes. 1977, part two of the Korvac Saga. The most unexpected confrontation ever. Guest starring the Guardians of the Galaxy and featuring Starhawk's most desperate duel. First Blood. There you have on the cover the Beast, Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, Thor, Wonder Man, and the Vision, along with a mysterious villain right there. Can we kind of guess who that is? Of course, this is a front cover by none other than George Perez. Inside, George Perez and Pablo Marcus did the inks. James Shooter. Wrote the script, Denise Wall, letterer, colorer, Phil Rache, editing, Archie Goodwin. I will say, if I didn't say it last time, for the last issue, I think that uh, George Perez might be my favorite artist who ever worked, whoever drew The Beast. I think The Beast looks absolutely amazing in these issues, drawn by George Perez and inked by Paulo Marcus. So let's take a look. So last we left off, right, the Avengers were forming an alliance with the Guardians of the Galaxy, right, who are chasing Korvac across the solar system, across the multiverse, I guess, from, from the future back in time. The deadly confrontation. The FAA verified our Avengers priority status and granted clearance to land at the mansion, but I can't seem to contact Jarvis. In fact, our HQ's receiving station seems to be out. It can't, but keep trying, Iron Man says. Okay, so here we got they're, they're all on the uh, all on the ship, of course, with the exception of uh, Vance Astro. He can't go because, of course, Vance Astro. This is like again the Guardians come from thousands of years in the future, and his human form is still alive on Earth. He's a, a teenager, and so because Korvac is actually trying to go back in time to get him. Uh, Vance Astro can't participate in what's going on here. So the rest of the Guardians are going to have to kind of watch over young Astro, make sure nothing happens to him while the Avengers are, uh, you know, out doing what they got to do in this whole partnership thing here. So here you see they get back to Avengers Mansion. The security system is down. Where's Jarvis? All right. So, of course, they go bust in because they got no choice at this point. So they all enter into an Avengers Mansion. Oh, here we got some. Cool ads. Get your sea monkeys. Only a dollar. Maybe you actually buy those things. What actually were they, right? So here they uh, they break in. They make their entrance. They're wondering who, they, but they they found out that someone busted in. Someone actually got in. So they go in, of course. And who is there sitting there? But none other than uh, Henry Peter Gyrick, special agent of the National Security Council. He's not happy because, he, of course, he was able to get into Avengers Mansion without a problem and subdue Jarvis. And thinking if you guys are in charge of all sorts of uh, government secrets and things like that, you can't even keep your place safe. That's exactly what he says here. We have a good bit to discuss. Gather, gather your colleagues, please, everyone currently in this building here immediately. And then he basically tells them, you know, Iron Man, the Avengers are provided many special privileges by the government, special exemptions from air traffic regulations, exclusive communications, wavelengths, and the most importantly, an AI security clearance, or A1 security clearance. There was no AI back then. And a unique Avengers priority status. Only two men in the entire country can override or deny those privileges. The president and me, he says. So he's quite unhappy that uh, he was able to get in so easily. So Iron Man says, get to the point, mister. Iron Man, I strolled into this place through a 12-foot hole in the south wall. That happened prior issue. It wasn't difficult then to subdue your butler and gain access to everything in this building, including your records, virtually tons of sophisticated classified hardware, and your computers, which are tied into the U.S. security network. If I were an enemy agent, I would have left here with a bushel of our nation's most vital secrets. And so, of course, Captain America is like looking all pissed off, and Wanda looks in and goes, uh oh, looks like that struck a raw nerve of Cap's. And uh, so the agent says, instead of leaving, however, I turned on the alarm and waited for you, only to have you arrive with those strange uh, people, none of whom have security clearance, I'll wager. For that matter, some of you aren't, some of your own aren't cleared as well. And then Wonder Man says, I think he means me. 
How can you expect to be trusted with this country's top security clearance when your own security is a joke? Gyrick, wait, don't worry, I'll be back. So again, now Iron Man's trying to back up and Cap says, uh, you know, Cap's is all upset. And Cap goes, the fact is we should have been, we should have beaten Nefaria before he ever got near this mansion. That's who destroyed the hole in the wall. But this team's been a pushover since you became a leader, Iron Man. It's your fault because you're treating your chairmanship like a part-time job. But that's what it is to you, isn't it? You're moonlighting as an Avenger because you have a full-time job as Tony Stark's personal bodyguard that Iron Man says to himself, I am Stark, but I can't tell Cap that. Uh, uh, Cap says, Stark's been keeping you so busy lately you haven't had time for. Iron Man jumps in and goes, that's enough. You've, you've, you're entitled to your own opinions, but I'm not going to let you tear this team apart. My dealing with Stark are strictly is strictly my dealings with Stark are strictly my own business. Or have you forgotten? All Avengers are guaranteed their personal privacy by our charter. And then Cap goes, he goes, you low life mercenary. Don't the Avengers pay enough for your services? And he hauls off and whacks him. So then you got Thor holding him back. Of course, Cap hurt his hand punching uh, Iron Man, Scarlet Witch throw some furniture into the middle of the two of them says you know you guys have to stop this you know we're supposed to be a team whatever and of course she gets pissed at uh, cap saying you know you haven't been around all that much lately either right well, exactly does she say she goes let's talk about how how much help you've been recently seems to me you haven't been a factor at all except once when you got in the way and prevented me from defeating ultron back in issue 161 so uh you know he goes all right wanda you made your point and he goes and sulks off so here you have this is almost like pre like civil war stuff right so you got cap and iron man kind of at odds here over the leadership of the team all right poster bonanza Woohoo! all right so then we go let's go out west where we have hawkeye and two-gun kid hanging out all of a sudden they're on a train two-gun kid disappears into thin air He's like, whoa, where'd he go? What's going on? What's happening? So then we have uh, the Guardians and the Avengers talking about kind of next steps, what they got to do. Then we fast forward to a house out in suburbia where we have a young lady who's entering a house. There's another young lady there. And uh, the one is looking to, 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 to talk to Michael. Michael's the guy in the house. That's actually Korvac, right? So here... They sit and talk, but it's actually Starhawk who's impersonating the lady. Okay, so him and Michael or Korvac actually get into kind of like a weird uh, astral plane fight, so to speak. All right, so there's all sorts of stuff going on. And there's Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson, and they, they can sense something's going on, right? Of course, that's all you see of Spidey and Mary Jane, right? They don't do anything more here. Here we got the letters page. Snap into oh, not that's Slim Jim. Clark Coconut, Zagnuts, good stuff. I was gonna say. Snap into a Slim Jim. So here we have the big fight. Okay, which goes on between those two. Which it looks like Korvac wins this one, right? So then all of a sudden you see Doctor Strange gets alerted that there's something going on. There's a tremor. Captain Marvel also senses something is going on. So Korvac, die, Korvac, die, Korvac. Silver Surfer also notices something is happening. All right, so it looks like Korvac has won this battle here. Thor in the Dingaling family, plus a little devil dinosaur ad. So, but he actually brings Starhawk back now under his control so he sends him out then we go back to avengers mansion and starhawk shows back up something seems off with him right some of his uh cohorts in the guardians can kind of tell what's going on here so um searching where have you been searching searching through sometimes i think you're just plain like sneaking out grow up will you uh, did you find out anything only that we must proceed with our mission it is imperative except the word of the one who knows just believe him, Rusty. He's weird, but real, huh? Okay, whatever. And then a little epilogue at the end. There you have Korvac, who is sitting there thinking and plotting his next move, which uh, next issue, Through Hell, should bar the way. What's interesting about this, um, and I believe next issue, yeah, 
So issue number, we're not going to go through issue number 169 because 169, I guess they were having some issues finishing out the story. So they did like a quick little story in issue 169, which had nothing to do with this whole saga what, whatsoever. So that was kind of like uh, one of those, um, let's just do a filler issue, right? So we will pick up back in Avengers of the Korvac Saga, num part number three, in issue number 170. But what's interesting is like they, there are a few issues that happen that don't exactly involve Korvac or the Guardians, right? That they're, they're, they're kind of like there's a lot going on here over this 10 issue run. So, or, or 10, yeah, 10 issue run. So, uh, but stay tuned for issue number 170, which will go into part three of this whole saga. Uh, and again, we've got uh, George Perez is not in every single, doesn't draw every single issue, which is kind of interesting. Kind of, there were a few that did not have him. Um, and I'm not sure for how long, but uh, yeah. Anyway. There you have it, issue number 168. I know a lot of you are a fan of the whole Korvac saga, so let us know what you think of this particular issue, the art. And, uh, you know, if you don't have it, you haven't read it, you probably want to. This is pretty cool stuff. This is great late 70s Avengers stuff right here. So uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Very, very important. And uh, we'll see you here real soon with more stuff on Comic Book Users. While Bill and I will be getting together this weekend to uh, record all sorts of cool stuff. So you'll have uh, a lot of videos coming up uh, next week and the week after. Featuring the two of us interspersed with some stuff from me going through these Avengers books. So uh, we got more to come. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Pete Pardo for Comic Book Users. We'll see you real soon. Bye.